Where's Yo? Jenga's where's Yo? Yolanda? Who? Yolanda? Yes, Jocelyn. Ah, oh, that's more like it. I knew it, it I knew it was a hair thing. Mm-hmm. It was. <laughs> right now I'm actually Yolanda. But when I straighten my hair, I'm Yolanda. Yes. You have to make it extra long. Yolanda. I think I got it. I think you do it better. Can you yes. just Yolanda? You need a W in it. That was a whole other level. Yeah, that's who I am. I think we're ready for the third installment of Giant Cupcake Cake. To be clear, the first giant cupcake was that mint chocolate chip with the donut on top. The second was the movie night with the gold wrapper and all the like movie snacks. And this is a Christmas cupcake. You know I always like to tell you guys how to like level up on the desserts you leave for Santa, right? Christmas Giant Cupcake. Oh boy, this, this cake takes a lot of cake. For the bottom, I baked four chocolate cakes in consecutive sizes. So seven, eight, nine, and 10 inch pans. And then for the top, I'm doing like a Christmas funfetti. So red and green sprinkles in vanilla cake, same size pans. I'm gonna get all of my cake removing and leveling out of the way first. I remove all of my chocolate cakes, level them, and I'm not gonna layer them because I want the cake to be sturdy. This cake has some serious weight, so we need to keep structure in mind. The next thing I'm going to do is remove all four of my funfetti cakes, level them, and remove the caramelization from the bottom of the cakes. Because this funfetti will be the top of the cupcake, I also wanna take the time to round off the top and bottom edge of each cake, and that will give me the look that it's piped. With the largest funfetti cake, which is the 10 inch, you only wanna round off the top edge, cause this is kind of like the hump that grows out of the cupcake paper. The next thing I wanna do is cut secret chambers out of three of these layers. So the 10 inch, the nine inch, and the eight inch are going to have a circle of cake removed from the center with a circle cutter. You'll wanna save at least one of these circles before you snack, because we're gonna stack that onto our smallest seven inch cake and sculpt it to look like a tip. This would be the top of the cupcake where you lift your piping bag. It kind of looks like the shape of like a Hershey kiss. Now it's time to simple syrup all of this cake. How many pounds of cake did you use, y'all? Hold on, I gotta add seven, seven, ten, thirteen. So it's 26 pounds in total. 13 pounds of chocolate cake and 13 pounds of vanilla funfetti cake. Oh my lord. That is, this a, is a lot. Giant cupcake. This is a giant cup. And you know what's insane? This is smaller. Really? Yeah, because when I did the movie night cupcake, the biggest cake I baked was 12 inches. Well, yeah. it's for Santa, so. I had to make sure he could carry it out the chimney. So I was well, just with, thinking of Santa. With a slice missing. Correct. The next thing I wanna do is fill and stack my chocolate cakes and I'm using chocolate ganache as the filling. That's because it's the sturdiest filling I could use. So I'm starting with the largest cake on the bottom, spreading ganache and working my way up to the smallest cake. At this point, I wanna chill this cake, let it get nice and firm before I start carving. To carve this cake, keep in mind, this is the cupcake paper, but upside down. So what I'm going to do is place a six inch pan on top, mark it in place, and then I'm gonna cut from that mark diagonally down to the base cake. So it's like I'm making an A-line cut all the way around. Once I'm happy with the shape of my cupcake base, I am going to crumb coat the entire thing in more chocolate ganache. Now I can move on to crumb coating my Funfetti cakes. I'm not stacking them up just yet because we have to fill that secret chamber. So I've placed all four of these cakes on its own board and I'm gonna crumb coat each one with Italian meringue buttercream. I hope Santa doesn't judge my buttercream. Like you don't think he goes straight from Italy to Toronto, right? I don't think he's stopping to have buttercream everywhere he goes, so. I would do that if I was Santa. It would explain his, uh, midsection situation. Is that is that the PC way to say that? You know what I mean? Like if I was traveling the world in one night, I'm eating something in each place. There's no way I'm not doing that. Is he gonna be allowed to travel? Yeah, are they stopping him at borders? I have questions for Santa. I should have, I should. the reindeer have to do it on their own without him? I, I don't know if they're capable of that. You know what no, I mean? Don't underestimate Rudolph. You I shouldn't, <laughs> you're right, I shouldn't. <laughs> 
Once I've crumb coated all four of my Christmas Funfetti cakes, I'll put them in the fridge to chill. And now I'm gonna switch back to the base cake, the cupcake paper. The first thing I wanna do is place a board on top of the cake that I've cut exactly to size. And now I'm gonna ice the cake with more chocolate ganache. You can use a bench scrooper, a bench scrooper? Hmm. So use a bench scraper <laughs> to help smooth the sides. And even though they're diagonal, all you have to do is hold your bench scraper on a diagonal. Now it's time to switch cakes and I'm going to ice all the Christmas Funfetti cakes with more Italian meringue buttercream. And I'm going to use my invention, which I didn't really invent, a square piece of acetate. And it's great because you can hold it and you can curve it and pull the buttercream along the sides of the cake. And that lets us keep that like scalloped shape on the sides. So all four cakes have been iced. Now it's time for fondant. I'm going to cover the base of this cupcake in red fondant. I'm gonna, I know Santa likes red. I mean, the, that's all the dude wears. So I figure it's safe. If you could only wear one color all year long. Oh, whoa. Wow. What color would you wear? You see, part of me wants to say blue because I think I'd always wanna wear jeans, but I don't wanna wear the Canadian tuxedo. And I, I mean, black is safe, but I feel like black in the middle of July is not stylish. It's it's torture. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, maybe I'll choose the light blue because that that allows me to have denim. Yes. <laughs> what would yours be? Like sparkles, <laughs> Jocelyn? <laughs> What's that color that um, the holograph, like the holographic? Oh, like you basically want to wear silver that is completely iridescent in different lighting. So technically you want to wear a rainbow. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I actually decided to wrap this cupcake bottom because when fondant is dry, the weight of it on itself will pull and tear. So I decided to measure my cake around. I measured the circumference at the base and at the top, and then I rolled it longer than that measurement. Then I unravel the fondant around the cake, smooth it in place with a fondant smoother, and then what you wanna do is just make sure to press the fondant in along the bottom of the cake, trim away any excess at the bottom and along the top. This is the time where I need to make the indents to make it look like cupcake paper. And basically what I do is I create a template that's the same size as the top of the cake, and then I fold it like pie slices into sections. And then I put that template on top and mark those sections. But now I need to create the exact same number of sections along the bottom. So I use my fabric measuring tape measure and then have to divide that number by however many sections I created on top. When I did Movie Night Cupcake, that math killed me. Because no matter how I did it, it didn't work out. I tried inches, I tried centimeters. It just didn't work out. This time, it worked out perfectly. I measured the bottom of the cake and it was a number that was divisible by 12. It's, that was like my Christmas gift to myself. Yes. Now, I'm gonna hold up a ruler and use a sculpting tool to mark that line from the mark I made at the top to the mark I made at the bottom. So the cupcake bottom is done. It has its sections, it's beautiful, but it's for Santa. I need to jazz it up. So I'm going to paint this fondant with some red luster dust, and I'm gonna add some red color dust to it because I feel like it's not a dark enough red. And I'm gonna create a paint with clear food grade alcohol and just paint it all over the fondant. I am going to use my brush in up and down motions just to go with the lines of the cupcake. The cupcake base is pretty much done, so I'm gonna put it aside to dry. So while my cupcake base is drying, I'm going to take out my largest Funfetti cake, and I'm going to actually ice it one more time because I'm going to press in a Christmas sprinkle medley. Pretty sure, but maybe everyone watching can confirm. I think the first time you used the invention was on the first, in the first edition of Giant Cupcake. I think you're right. I think you're right. I that think was like the first time you had to create those like perfectly. Yes. Yes, I think you're right. I think so. I think so. Yeah. So it's like tradition, like you have to use I it. I have to. Yeah, I will be using it in every future installment of Giant Cupcake. Yes. Yes. I'm going to place my cake on the Lazy Susan in a really big cake pan. I have like a 16 inch cake pan. And then I'm going to take my sprinkles and press them into the side of the cake. 
all the way around. I'm gonna take out the cupcake base and very carefully flip it over so it's right side up. The next thing I need to do is mark the center and then mark a circle around that center point where I will insert the dowels. You wanna keep in mind the size of the base of your cake. So the base of this cake is about six inches and it gets wider as it goes up. So keep in mind that, that circle of dowels needs to fit within a six inch circle. Otherwise, you'll start to push your dowels in and they'll come out the side of the cupcake. And these will really help become the foundation that holds up the top portion of this cake. I can't give Santa a squashed cupcake. He has to put it in the sleigh. So are you doweling sort of really specially for the fact that this cake needs to fly in a sleigh? There probably is, but I didn't know it. You know what I mean? I tried to find golden dowels, like magical dowels. No. Oh, candy cane dowels. Candy Yo. cane. <laughs> We're gonna have to manufacture those ourselves and then I'll use them next Christmas. The next thing I wanna do is spread a thin layer of royal icing on the top surface of this cake. I don't wanna take it out right to the edge onto the red fondant. This will both seal the top of the cake and act as the perfect glue to hold our next cake layers on top. So really carefully, I'm gonna pick up that first Funfetti cake, the one that has the whole sprinkled side, and place it on top of the cupcake. I really wanna center it in place. So when I put this cake on, I realized it was so exact, and I really wanted it to sort of hang over the fondant a little bit more. So what I decided to do is I placed some Italian meringue buttercream in a piping bag, and with a small round tip, I piped a ring of buttercream into that gap. And then the next thing I did was use some Christmas jelly beans in red and green, and I glued them onto the buttercream, alternating the color all the way around the cupcake. Now it's time to stack up the rest of the cakes and fill the secret chamber. So the first thing I'm going to do is scoop in some Christmas Smarties. If you don't know what Smarties are, they're the Canadian M&Ms. I couldn't stop eating them. You know what? I think I ate too many before I made this cake. So as I was doing the chamber, I realized I didn't have enough Smarties. So I, I filled the first cake with red and green Smarties. Then I dabbed on a little bit of buttercream around, placed the second cake on, and then I filled that cake with red and green jelly beans. Then I added the next cake, and I did Smarties again. Santa has a real variety of Christmas candy. I had to test them and make sure that they were top quality Smarties. That's really what happened. And then you can add the top layer of cake, which is like the little tip, right on top. So drip wasn't part of my original design in my mind, but as I started to build the cupcake, I thought it might look too white on top. And I also thought Santa deserves more chocolate. And again, I hope he doesn't eat this chocolate drip and then fly right to Switzerland. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's a really easy chocolate sauce to make because it's just chocolate, butter, and corn syrup, and you can melt it all together in the microwave. Once it's prepared, you just have to make sure it's cool enough that it won't melt your buttercream. I placed it in a squeezable bottle, and then I just, from the top of the cupcake, I started to squeeze and create a drip. I'm so happy I decided to do it though because I love the way it looks. Maybe instead of Christmas trees, we should all just have giant cupcakes in our living room. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, but you can't put it up too early. And don't do this if you have pets. <laughs> or kids. Or yeah, <laughs> so pretty much only do this if you're alone. And now, I mean, this is where it gets really fun. So I have a bunch of Christmas candies, like Christmas tree shaped jujubes, and I have candy canes, and I have some dragées. I'm basically just using a variety of candies. You can use anything you like to decorate the cupcake. The key here is make sure you give your cake a chance to warm up a little because you want the candy to stick to the Italian meringue buttercream. And then I placed two big candy canes on top. I actually broke one on purpose and like inserted it a bit and then added another one. It looked really good. It's very Christmassy. I've actually created a decorating program that covers a lot of the techniques that I used on this cake. Each chapter of this program covers a different technique that you can apply to your own cake decorating. 
leveling, crumb coating, icing, using sprinkles, dripping on a cake. And even though I use them to create this giant cupcake, these techniques can be used to make any cake. Maybe not always all together, but I definitely use them to create the best cakes I can. The program has over 13 video lessons that you can watch at your own pace. And once you sign up, you have access to them forever. Click right here if you wanna learn more. And just so you know, it is on sale until the end of the year. Santa must be virtually gift giving. Is he sending people links? What is he doing? This giant cupcake is not enough cake for you, click here.